So you can't really see it, I don't think, but I am wearing my Inside Out shirt today. You know, the cast that from the movie, right? Inside Out. And it says I have a lot of feelings. Uh, and I'm doing that because I have a lot of feelings about this pour that the Soprentis did in epic fashion. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you all about this pour and why I have so many feelings about it in just a minute. But before I do, hello, I am Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 35 of 365 days of soap, here too. And today, the Soaprentice is tackling a pour without acrylic multi-divider pour tool thing. Yes, and last week you saw my awesome version that didn't completely screw up, right? Like, it was great, and it totally looked like a kiss pour. Like, that's... You don't even need to make it kiss. Just use that thing and pour. And it's cool, for sure. So actually a painter, acrylic person, told me that that's different. It's like a flat pour. But that's also cool. And uh, the Soprentice had seen mine and I was like, now do you want to play with it? And she said yes. And I said, just have some fun with it. You know, this is what I did with it, but that doesn't mean you have to do that. this. So just, you know, play with it, whatever. And she did. And it's awesome. And I'm very proud of her. Like, it's great, but like, I had two fails, one good one, and like her first thing out of the gate was just amazing. But, you know, let's go check out the amazing and we can all give Georgia really big rounds of applause because I really am proud of her. It's just, why do I mess up all the time? Okay, before anyone starts like thinking this is some kind of way, I'm not actually bitter. I, I am obviously not bitter. The Soprentis is amazing and I am proud of all of her accomplishments and I do happy dances right along with her when she nails a pour. It was just a funny little thing. I'm not serious. I love her and am proud of her. And this is why she's my Soprentis. Actually, to that, someone uh, asked me kind of recently, you know, when the Soprentis graduates to like the new level. And like the answer to that is uh, a long time ago, really. But like if you're doing like a spin on like a play on words with apprenticeships, right? The next place to go is a journeyman and I don't know how to make her I, I don't know how to turn a phrase on journeyman I also don't know why it's called journeyman like there are a lot of females in the there are a lot of non-binary people in the worlds in the craft worlds the trades worlds wherein these sorts of terms are used why is it journey person? Why is it not journey person? But also, even if it were journey person, how do I turn a cute little soapy phrase out of journey person? These are the things that keep me up at night, guys. It, it, it's all a thing. So, you know, welcome to my world. And also, welcome to this poor. Hi, the Soprentis is playing with the uh, 
multi-divider tool thing, the, the acrylic pour thing, and I already spoiled it for you. She did awesome with this. Like, she's so good at all the things. Now, she is using the exact same scent blend that I used for mine, for my pretty one. And uh, so it's the lavender mint blend, and she is still putting the kaolin clay into everything. And I told her after I had done mine, I'm like, okay, so now do you want to play with this? And, you know, make it fun. Do whatever. It doesn't have to be the kiss pour, but I did it as the kiss pour. And again, I know it's not called the kiss pour in like acrylic artistry things. It's just like a flat pour or a straight pour or something, but I looks like a freaking kiss pour. So I can't stop calling it that. And um, yeah, so the thing about the kiss pour is when we did that for the Amy Warden's Soap Challenge revisit or whatever at the end of last year, the Soap Prentice really got into it. So she watched the tutorial on Amy Warden and that's all I ever did for any of these things. Because for the most part, the majority of these pours I've already done before. And so, you know, there's that. But, you know, I just, I, I just watched the one. And she was telling me, so I, I saw these cool ones with kiss pours and like moving it into different areas of the, of the mold and pouring in different sections and doing all the things. And I'm like, cool, 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 cool. And so I knew that she was going to be playing with it with this one because I don't think she like super played with it with the kiss pour that we did for the Amy Warden soap challenge challenge thing. And I want to say that's Lone Star's fault. I mean, it's, I don't even know who we were reviewing at that point, but I, I think maybe batter was the, I don't know, or maybe it was just the first time and she wanted to, you know, do it the right way. Cause I guess that was the entire point of the, of revisiting the challenges, but she had an opportunity to do a kiss pour and, you know, do some weird stuff with it. And so this is what she's going to do today using this multi-divider acrylic tool thing. Yes. Find it interesting that we're coming off of, you know, my kiss pour, not for the multi-divider, but for Katie. So she's going to show me up in two ways today. You know what? Maybe I am a little bitter. I'm no, I'm, I'm really, I'm not. I, it's still, I'm still just joking. I love her. She's amazing. And there's no competition in the soap shop. That's not how I work with anything. There's no competition with me and any soapers because we all bring our own vibe and style and awesomeness to the, uh, to the world. But I just, just in case for some crazy reason, this is the first video that you are literally seeing from me. I I'm not, I'm not that. That's not, it was all a joke. Just, just, just a joke. But I do love that she's working with four colors for all of this. And she's got black and white twice and then a yellow and a pink. So this is going to be really cool. Let's go to her pour and check out the coolness of all of the things. So onto this amazing pour. And I'm just as fascinated as you are with this whole process. Because I saw the end cut. I didn't actually see the pour. I mean, I saw it when I edited, but when you're editing, you don't super pay attention to the thing that's on the screen as much as the sort of little mini teeny tiny images that you see and you're just looking for places to cut dead space. Which is another weird thing that people have been asking me about, like starting a YouTube channel and editing and stuff. And I'm like, I don't know. I, what? I, I'm not a subject matter expert in this one, guys, uh, as you can tell. But this is cool. So she did four different points. Now, remember this particular acrylic spout multi-divider thingy 
it only holds 30-ish ounces of soap. And so she has to refill, refill it to get it to get all 54 ounces of what this batch is into the mold. And this is how she did the thing. I will be goddamned if that doesn't look like a whole bunch of really cool clamshells, like the clamshell technique in a slap. That is so beautiful. I'm, wow. I... Now I really wanna know, is she gonna bang it down because the batter got thicker? Okay, now you see how like when she just went to twist it, the batter that was on the lower right hand corner sort of like swooped over to the side a little bit. So it's still a reasonably fluid batch. She did bang it down. Okay, okay, okay. And there is some really interesting variation. So she ended up with essentially three layers there on the right hand side of the mold, two on the left, and just the differences in the thickness of the batter. Wow, this is cool. This is very cool. For once in my life, I'm actually excited to see a slab cut into, into multiple pieces because mostly you already know what it's going to look like, right? Not really with this one. And on to the cut of this. Now, this did go through C-Pop and Gel and her colors and the shininess of the bar absolutely show that. Like, it is beautiful. And also her ability to cut slabs and do the things also beautiful she spent like she's so excited she spent like three plus years going i'm not gonna cut that like she was scared no straight cuts and look at her she's doing great good job and i am already seeing as i sort of chunk this out in my brain that every single one of these soaps is going to be totally unique and different. And the cool like ribbon effect from using the tool is going to show through the entirety of the bar. This is cool. This is cool. This is beautiful. Yes. And, and also, this is the fourth time that we've used this acrylic pour thing. Nothing's etched, people. That's not how that works. There are no holes. There is no... And we've actually been really mean to this little tool thingy. Like, after the first two that I did with really, really thick soap batter, the instructions specifically say, don't put hot water in it. I put hot water in it, like, six to 6,000 times in a row just to make all the soap in it go away. Oh, so pretty. Oh my gosh, there's so much variation just around all sides of that. That is beautiful. But then, you know, also soap just sat in it for a long time. No etching, no eating, everything's okay. Oh, that's so beautiful. That is lovely. And again, every single one of those bars, completely different. Like the only thing that's actually really the same is the colors, obviously, but and the scent, but even the color's not necessarily true, right? Because that bar that she just showed us just had black, white, and yellow in it. And then these ones, they've got some pinks. That is lovely. Such a beautiful bar of soap, such a beautiful loaf of soap. It's not a loaf, it's a slab, batch of soap. That's what I was going for, batch. And I love this. Yeah, just like within slab form, you can do some really cool things with this little acrylic divider tool thingy. Like, this is fun. The possibilities are as endless as your imagination and creativity, really. I have none of that creativity thing, but the So Prentice does, and it's delightful. That's absolutely beautiful. This is my favorite one right here. Like the one that ended up 
just to the right with multiple layers. Oh, that is so beautiful. Oh my, look at that bar. That one's my favorite bar right there. Mr. Soap and Clay said we should start numbering all of the ones that we use for the actual videos, right? Because we make more of them, it's just off camera. And then like, so for everyone that's shown, we put a little like one, two, whatever. And then for the people that buy them, they could say, hey, I got number one, or I think that would be number nine. That was my favorite, right? Like, oh my gosh, I got number nine soap. And that would be cool. I, I thought that was a fun idea, but that also requires more editing. And so going back to the aforementioned people asking me about how to edit, I'm like, I don't know. That's so pretty. That one was my favorite, right? Yeah, that's my favorite bar. I'm gonna go with bar number nine. Whoever gets bar number nine, you have to like comment like on Insta and like, you know, tag us or in the YouTube video, whatever, and say, I got bar number nine because that one is my favorite. And all of them are gorgeous just across the board. And I love the soap apprentice doing this. I definitely left this in. She does this longer for every soap that she super duper loves. And she's spending a lot of time with these ones trying to stage them correctly. And you know, I get it. That is a uh, day 35, the Soap Prentice's multi-divider. So I super love how like those bars look like, like clamshell technique almost, but in a slab, the way that, that was amazing. And you know, using the lavender mint again, also great idea because it extends trace like nobody's business. So she had plenty of time to play with all the things and all the jazz for sure. And everything about that is absolutely gorgeous. And there's another example of what you can do with the acrylic multi-divider, you know, tool thing. I think we're done with slabs with this for now, and we're probably gonna move to loafs at some point, but we might be giving it a break for a while. But yeah, no, so far the tool, the pourer, it's still fine. There's no etching in it. There's no holes in it. It's all completely fine. As multiple people have pointed out throughout this entire process, the little things for pull-throughs, those are all mostly 3D printed too, and those stay in the soap batter way longer than what the soap batter stays in the... So like, I have no idea what that all was and why everybody was freaking out, but you know, people in the soap world like to freak out about a lot of silly things, and you know, that's fine, more power to them. This is, an, this is what it looks like for those of you who wondered. This is what you can do with it, so yes. If you are interested in these soaps, you can find them at soapandclay.com. Those are also under the lavender bar section because we made the lavender bar with this and so it looks different than it usually does but you know it's back for a limited time so that's exciting you can find those at soapandclay.com along with everything else for sure if you are interested in seeing what other tests we do what other weird things we find on the soap forums and then have to you know play with and debunk and whatever subscribe to the channel we do this every day as the name 365 days of soap might suggest for those of you who are subscribed hey thanks for coming back and hanging out with us while we test things and debunk things or sometimes prove things right so that's cool i appreciate you coming back for another round of 365 days of soap dude day i'm out of here but i'll see you guys all again tomorrow for another round of soapy fun bye